Every year, I review the baits and lures that built the most bass for me during tournaments. And after reviewing my 2022 data, I was pretty shocked on what two baits pretty much stopped working for me this year and how different it was from prior year's catches. I'm sure most all of you have found yourself in a tackle store staring down an aisle, a wall, huge wall, thousands, hundreds of lures, and you're just overwhelmed and don't know what to do. This video should help you filter out all that noise, get down to baits that will help you catch more big bass going forward. I'm going to share my most five productive baits from tournaments last year and some data to back it up. Recently, I was following up and replying on a bunch of YouTube comments, and I came across this great comment right here from Bob. And he called out what he thought based on my last tournament video, what my breakdown of catches and most productive baits for the years were. And we're going to follow up and see how accurate Bob really was. Thanks for the comment, Bob. Quick little recap. This is a snapshot of what my 2021 looked like. Some of the top baits just to give you some perspective. And it'll help you understand some of the big changes from year to year. And also, which ones seem to be mainstays every year that don't leave my top five? Here's a quick summary. And you can see a breakdown of all my catches and all my tournaments all season long. This is compromised of 13 different tournaments over the course of 17 tournament days. I weighed on all 87 bass. I was eligible, so full limits every single day. Between a 6th and 7th place finish, which put me in the top 22% of the tournaments I fished, and cash checks in 8 of 13, which isn't too bad, 62%, I'd still like it to be a touch higher. Average bass over the year was just under 3 pounds, which put me at 14 pounds and change per tournament day. 22% of these were caught on a spinning rod. Shockingly, only 3% last year on spinning rods in tournaments. I had a better year with more limits, higher weight. Now moving on and looking down a little closer at just tournaments that I cashed checks in. So that's just the eight tournaments that I actually cashed a check or won. So with eight events over 10 tournament days, again, limits, 51 total bass. Averaged a 3.4th place finish and got one win. Slight increase in average catch, a little closer to three pounds, a little closer to 15 pounds per day. Not a huge difference. We're talking really tight between not cashing a check and cashing a check in some of these tournaments. Again, much higher percentage spinning rod. And a neat thing this year is a tube in some form or fashion was one third over 30% of all the fish I weighed in tournaments where I cashed a check. And one of the big things there is I went from like 20% of my fish last year was smallmouth to up to basically one third of my fish being smallmouth in tournaments this year. Now let's hop into those top five check caching most impactful baits of 2022. First of all, a newcomer this year, we kicked off the year on a smallmouth fishery on the river and the jerkbait was a really big player. Specifically, this Jackal Rearrange MR in this secret shad color was a really producer, both in tournaments and not in tournaments. So this, uh, finally some new love for the jerkbait, which I've always hasn't always had a huge confidence in jerkbaits, but I'm learning more and more to embrace the jerkbait. Texas rigs remain on top year over year. I mean, it's hard to beat a Texas rig. Most of my Texas rigs were rigged on, uh, you know, a, a light tungsten weight, with a three to four aught ring DWG hook and some kind of a creature bait. Uh, tube craws, neds, BFEs, sweet beavers, D bombs were the top tickets this year. As I go through these baits, if any of them seem interesting to you, I will drop links down in the description below where you can easily find and shop and grab these baits for yourself. Rising up the list this year was the stick bait. A stick bait produced a lot of limit fish last year. And I caught a lot of fish in tournaments, but I didn't weigh a lot of fish on stick baits, neds, and wacky rigs last year. But this year, they were instrumental and actually were a big part of catching not only limits fish, weigh fish, but actually check caching fish. So that could have been ned rigs, you know, jig worms, senkos, stick baits, things like this, you know. And and many times, uh, one tournament was pretty much almost all do dominated by a wacky rig. You can't ever go fishing, and I don't go fishing very often without a jig. So a small 3 8 half ounce jig was a big player. I did mix it up and use the three quarter ounce grass jig as well. But the jig with a speed craw or a menace grub or a baby D bomb was a mainstay, and it 
year over year, this pushes a lot of big fish in my boat and a lot of wave fish and a lot of tournament fish. And surprisingly, the one that dominated this last year was the stupid tube. I caught some fish on a drop shot tube and some other tubes and exposed tubes, but it was primarily this stupid tube, which is kind of a normal tube with a modified jig head that you can rig Texas rig. I have videos out on this on how to make a stupid tube. Uh, but if you haven't ever tried a stupid tube, uh, don't sleep on the stupid tube. It was a big player and it made me a lot of money this year. Notable absentees from the list this year. Last year, over 40% of check cashing fish came on frogs. I only weighed one fish on a frog all year, and I didn't cash a check or qualify in that tournament. So I don't know what happened. It was the bodies of water, the way I fished, but frogs kind of disappeared off the list this year, which kind of makes me sad. And then the other, even maybe more surprising notable exception, is I definitely caught fish in some tournaments and some big fish. Um, but the chatterbait fell off the list for a check cashing tournament producer producing tournaments at a lower rate and just not in check cashing tournaments. Not to say that they're bad baits, but they fell off the list this year. So big takeaways here. These are baits that you can put into your arsenal when you're faced with that huge wall of tackle, some things that you can simplify, pair down to, that will catch you bass day in, day out, just about anywhere you fish across the country. Last year, I did a comparative breakdown against lures that Matt Pangrick did on his 2021 season. If you want to see the details of last catches against Matt Pangrick's, watch this video on the screen coming up right here. Thank you.